Did you get around to seeing Madam Web? No, the reviews put me off. So I'm in a very similar boat. So this is one of the first times on the Silver Screen Dudes that we're actually going to talk about a movie that neither of us have seen and act as if we're authorities on the matter. But the fact of the matter is, is Dakota Johnson respectfully has gone to town on this thing, but in a very, I think, graceful way. I don't get the vibe that, oh, the movie failed and I'm above reproach. I actually think she's been quite self-critical and very, very self-aware of how this movie was made. Um, let me bring up what she said, and then I guess we can... Well, I, I want to relate that to kind of what we discussed when we were talking about June earlier in the week, um, because it's very interesting what she's got to say. But here, here is effectively the full story. Here we go. This is from our friends over at Screen Rant. To quote to go to Johnson, I don't make sense in that world, and I know that now. Dakota Johnson gets brutally honest about Madam Web. Madam Web star Dakota Johnson has shared her honest thoughts on making the movie and its negative reception. While the Marvel Cinematic Universe is doing right by Tom Holland's Spider-Man, Sony's Spider-Man universe has now released a string of disappointing movies. As Madam Web's negative reviews and extremely low box office show, the film fails to find an audience and the movie star has gotten candid about that. Speaking to Bustle, Johnson revealed that she will probably never make a movie like Madame Web again. The actress talked about her experience making the film and revealed the conclusion she got to after the whole process, saying, I don't make sense in that world, and I know that now. Johnson's words and the movie's negative reception make Madame Web 2 happening impossible, and the actress seems fine with that, and she revealed that she understands the criticism the movie has faced. The full quote is this. It was definitely an experience for me to make that movie. I had never done anything like it before. I probably will never do anything like it again because I don't make sense in that world. And I know that now. But sometimes in this industry, and this is the interesting part, AJ, listen to this. Sometimes in this industry, you sign on to something and it's one thing. And then as you're making it, it becomes a completely different thing. And you're like, wait, what? but it was a real learning experience. And of course, it's not nice to be part of something that's ripped to shreds, but I can, can't can say that I don't understand. There's another quote she had that I want to go and find online somewhere. So hang about here because... Ah, do you know what? To, to save the sake of the viewers watching me scroll, I'm going to just kind of paraphrase what she said. She made it very clear that there were too many cooks in the kitchen with this movie. Please go and find the full quote online for yourselves now, guys. Terrible reporting on our part, but hey-ho, we're just pundits, not reporters. Um, she kind of went in on the fact that there were too many cooks in the kitchen, that it wasn't made with an artist at the head of what was essentially supposed to be art, but it was a load of execs, executives getting involved, and it ended up being a product made almost algorithmically and i've been saying for so long now case in point with the netflix movies most of them are trash you do get the odd good one now and then but most of them are trash and i'm saying this one of my close friends is a produce was a is a producer on the net on the witcher series and he's a producer on um Oh, what's that Anya Taylor-Joy? Qu uh, Queen's Gambit, he did that as well. So this guy is a proper producer at Netflix. And he's told me flat out that the way Netflix make movies is they are not a movie studio. They are a big tech company. That is what Netflix are. They look at audience viewing habits. They make movies off of those viewing habits. And they try and calculate algorithmically what it was an audience wants to see in a script to get them to keep watching. Almost the way that you would produce a piece of, you know, viral YouTube content. How can you get an audience member to watch right until the end? That's the psyche with which the Netflix people are making their movies. And from what Dakota Johnson says in her quote, which I invite you to go and find, it very much feels like Madam Web was made in that very same vein. Contrast that with how what we were talking about with Duny Villeneuve and the way Dune was made and how Grode, the CEO of uh, the studio, was basically saying, hey, if he's on board, as in having an artist at the head of the film, and hey, if we've got the script and it's his vision, we're going to go with it. That's a studio backing an artist. You can see how the two are so 
starkly contrasting both from critic and audience and obvious quality. Your thoughts on, I guess, the algorithmic filmmaking of Madame Web. That was so bad, neither of us saw it. <laughs> it's funny when you don't want to be a sheep, but you also don't want to waste your time. When time is a valuable commodity, it's very hard to rush into something that doesn't have the pleasures. I, I, it, do you know what really killed it for me with Madame Web is when someone else said to me, oh, the the person that I that, that film with the girl from Fifty Shades, it doesn't actually look very good. So, you know, it was someone who's quite a big fan of it and was still like, this isn't for me. Now, I, I, I implore anyone to go back a few weeks ago and listen to what we talked about, where it's not people have got comic book fatigue, but they've got bad comic book fatigue, like lazy comic book movie fatigue. And that's the part that really strikes to me on this. It's you, you can say, like, for Dakota Johnson to say she doesn't fit in the world, it, it's wrong because, quite frankly, if, if you're a good actress, you, you'll fit in any dimension. However, the, the whole element of what you're doing, like, wh where people are just seeing, oh, this is the popularist view, let's go and grab and jump on it. Yes, it works in a very huge... Like, we could capitalise on what we're doing because that's the topic of conversation, that's a, a limit of interest, and it's it's digesting the media that's produced for us. If you are creating the media, essentially we are creating media too, but if you are cre creating the media to be consumed and appreciated and want people to come back on, the same way we can take positives and negatives and give our opinion and which will hopefully implore you to come back, it's the same here. You need to not just be like, oh, everyone loves Spider-Man. Let's go into the Spider-Verse. Oh, Madam Web. Like, who, how, and what does Madam Web have to do with Spider-Man? And this is the key element of this Sony Disney situation. It's very hard to give me the entire Spider-Man world without Spider-Man. Now, I'm not saying they've done right or what they've done wrong. However, you're like, everyone loves Spider-Man. He's always been the biggest one for Marvel. Okay, Mar um, Captain America and Iron Man have leveled up quite a bit. <laughs> it's not like even the Guardians have. But Spider-Man is still that guy. However, you're now trying to create this world, and now you're creating all these shows and films, and it doesn't work. However, dare I go back to my youth, Every character that you have mentioned was in a Fox Kids cartoon and loved and respected. And you couldn't wait to see where the story unfolded because it was produced correctly. Take the time and produce because people do want to absorb the content. So algorithmically, yes, but don't just be Spider-Man's popular. This is from Spider-Man's world. Build on the Spider-Man world. And I'm not saying they shouldn't have done the Disney deal or they should have. But you need to know that if you're going to work around Spider-Man, you need Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, and while I, while I was um, rambling before, you were actually kind enough to uh, go and find the quote for me. So let me just actually bring it up now, because I think what she says is wonderfully brilliant. <laughs> um, I've got it here. It's all, uh, you've got it. Yeah, you can see it, yeah? Yep. It's, it's just a highlighted part. Um, and this is this is uh, Dakota Johnson's direct quote. It's so hard to get movies made. And in these big movies that get made and it's even starting to happen with the little ones, which is what's really freaking me out. Decisions are being made by committees and art does not do well when it's made by committee. Films are made by a filmmaker the Dune example I was giving you before, and a team of artists around them. You cannot make art based on numbers and algorithms. My feeling has been for a long time, the audiences are extremely smart and executives have started to believe that they're not. Audiences will always be able to sniff out BS. Even if films start to be made with AI, humans aren't going to effing want to go see those. I mean, look, I, I'll end this by saying, well said, Dakota, because I think she's going to land herself in hot trouble biting the hand that feeds her. But I actually think she also might start a ripple effect of being the first one that just needs to come out and say this for what it is. Stop feeding us this bland, generic, beige, vanilla algorithm content. It's, it's not OK anymore. And, and and that's why June has been such a great success because you can feel, despite its faults, which I point out in my review, um, which you can go and watch now on the channel, despite June's faults, it's still such a work of brilliance that when you consider that this and Madam Web came out less than a month apart from each other, it just makes you go, wow.
if you wanted to see the full and bearing in mind haven't seen madam web but it's universally been panned who knows maybe we'll be the two guys that go it wasn't that bad but from what i've been led to believe it is that bad and the fact that one of the stars is basically saying it's made by committee it's made by big tech algorithm so I want to know what you guys have to think. Uh, let me let us know what you thought of Madam Web. Actually, is it something that are, are you the unique snowflake out there who actually liked it? And if so, good for you. Not firing shots, but let us know what you thought. Let us know what you think of June, Madam Web. What's been your favorite and most disappointing movie that you've seen so far this year? Let us know down below. Like the video if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the Silver Screen Dudes YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next video.